Plowing is the most effective method of weed control and is the first stage in seabed preparation. Although the human factor is essential for achieving good results, you also need modern equipment which is easy to operate and can be used in all conditions. This video aims to give you simple and practical instruction on how to get the best from your Kvernaland reversible plow. For a plow to perform effectively, the tractor wheel settings have to be correctly adjusted as they control the width of the front furrow. Depending on the type of plow, the inside rear wheel setting should be between 100 and 150 centimeters. The front wheels should be 2 to 10 centimeters wider to enable the rear wheel to follow the furrow wall. If the front wheel setting is narrower, the tractor will wander from side to side, creating uneven work. This is also true if the front wheel setting is too wide, as both tractor and plough will pull out of line, producing a wide front furrow. Tire pressures must be equal on the same axle. The centre line indicates that the tractor works at the same angle when ploughing in both directions. The actual tire pressure should be in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations to provide both stability and traction. If the tyres are inflated to different pressures, the tractor will lean over, as illustrated, further to one side than the other, affecting the plough's performance. The tyre pressures have a direct bearing on the position of the tractor's rear linkage. The lower links must therefore always be set at the same length, so that the cross shaft is parallel with the tractor's rear axle. As the plough and tractor are coupled by the three-point linkage, if the tractor's lift arms are not the same length, the plough will lean into or away from its work. The simplest way of checking that the lift arms are level is to measure the distance between the upper and lower pins before coupling the plough. To ensure that the plough follows the tractor correctly, it is important to check that the cross shaft is of the right length. The extension of the lower link arms should cross the centre line of the tractor just behind the front axle. If the cross shaft is too short, the draft arms will become almost parallel and the plough will not follow the tractor but will wander from left to right, creating an uneven front furrow. Now to the plough itself. The first check is to ensure that the cross shaft is mounted central to the headstock to provide an equal front furrow width in both directions. For added security, before coupling the plough to the tractor, always ensure that the tractor's hydraulic system is in position control. Once the plough is coupled, the top link must be positioned so that its extension converges with the extension of the lower links just behind the front axle. For those ploughs fitted with the auto reset system, it is important to ensure that the leaf spring is set at 70 centimetres, measured between pin centres. This can easily be checked using the long spanner provided, which is marked accordingly. The majority of plough adjustments can be made prior to commencing work. Disc coulters are the first adjustment. Make sure that they are set to a minimum of two centimetres wider than the width of cut and parallel with the land side in an upright position. On lighter soils or for deeper ploughing, it may be necessary to move the disc coulter further out to maintain a clean furrow wall. The depth of the disc coulter is then set, 
so that its distance from the share is approximately five centimeters. This distance may have to be increased when working in hard or stony conditions. All disc coolers should be set in the same position for evenly shaped furrows. The manure skimmer is then positioned so that its point is in light contact with the disc and set to a working depth of three to five centimeters. The plow is now ready for work. The first step is to mark the headlands using the rear furrow. For ploughs turning with bodies over the main frame, the simplest way is to partly reverse the plough. For ploughs turning with their bodies under the main frame, the top link should be extended and the right hand lift rod on the tractor shortened. It is not usually necessary to adjust the depth wheel as the plough can be controlled by the tractor hydraulics. The rear disc coulter should be lowered to provide a clean furrow opening and to help stabilize the plough. After ploughing the open furrow, adjustments must be made to the ploughing depth, the top link, levelling of the plough, and the front furrow width. The plough must be set at the correct depth on the first run as this will enable the tractor's top link and the plough's level adjustment to be made. It is important that both the right and left hand depth adjusting screws are of equal length. The length of the top link is then adjusted so that the main frame runs parallel with the ground. Before adjusting, always stand back and view the plough to determine whether the top link needs to be shortened or lengthened. In this instance, it needs to be lengthened. If the top link is too short, penetration, draft requirement and wear will be greater than necessary. It will be noted that the front furrow is larger than the rear. On the other hand, if the top link is too long, this will reduce penetration with the front body ploughing shallower. At the correct setting, as shown, all bodies are ploughing at the same depth. To level the plough, the stroke of the turnover cylinder should be adjusted so that the plough beams are at 90 degrees to the ground. If the plough is working at the same angle in both directions, but the beams are not upright, the turnover cylinder has to be adjusted. However, if the angle of the plough differs when the ploughing direction is changed, this indicates unequal tyre pressures or lower links. If the plough leans to the right, as illustrated, the front furrow will be too wide and deep, whereas if the plough leans to the left, the front furrow becomes narrow. Both will result in uneven ploughing. When correctly set, the beams will be upright and all bodies will work at the same depth. The width of the front furrow can now be checked to ensure that it is equal to the remaining furrows. Any adjustments can be made by means of the turn buckle or hydraulic cylinder if fitted. This will move the plough to the left or right as desired until the correct width is achieved. Speed will greatly affect the performance of a plough. If too fast, trash will not be buried and therefore it may be necessary either to reduce the ploughing speed or to move the skimmers forward. It may also be necessary to make minor adjustments to the disc coulter setting to provide a clean finish. By applying these fundamental rules together with a little patience and practice you will achieve the optimum performance from your plough. Verneland ploughs are manufactured to a high standard of quality and precision and only by using genuine Kverneland replacement parts can this standard be maintained. The Kverneland symbol guarantees quality. Look for the arrow.